Hey guys, it is Jess and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another speed build. So today I'm building this house that's actually for my current save. You guys would be so proud of me. I still haven't like restarted my current save. Like I have kept the same family now for, what is it? Like I'm into the second generation. The second generation has just had a kid. So like, guys, oh my God, this is like, this is amazing. I am like sticking with this family and I love them so much. So anyway, um, that's what this build is for. And I just wanted to also say, I feel like I haven't uploaded um, a lot the last couple sort of weeks because I was sick. I had this cold and my throat was really sore. So I couldn't really do any voiceovers or anything because it hurt too much. And I also like, I took time off work because I work in a call center and like, honestly, I was just coughing and coughing and coughing and my throat was so sore and like every phone call was just like horrendous because my throat hurt. So I wasn't going to like, you know, take time off work because my throat hurt and then come home and be like, oh, I'm just going to do some voiceovers. It, it, I mean, it hurt too much to do them anyway, but it just didn't feel right. Um, and then after that, I ended up going to Melbourne. So I haven't really like sat down and done a voiceover for a while because when I went to Melbourne, which is last week, um, they were all pre-recorded videos that I put up. And it's really weird. Um, I have been to Melbourne twice in the last couple of months. So the first time I went to Melbourne, I did a whole heap of pre-recording. And then the videos that you guys, like the two speed builds that you guys would have watched um, while I was in Melbourne the second time, I actually recorded them before I went to Melbourne the first time. So it was kind of like, I was like, you know, oh, I'm packing to go to Melbourne. I'm in such a hurry. But that was the first time I went to Melbourne, not the second time. So it was, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. It was just weird. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that was very irrelevant. But like pre-recording is hard because you don't want to do something that is like, I don't know relevant to when you're doing the pre-recording you want something that's sort of like generic so it doesn't really matter when people listen to it um it's going to make sense and stuff so this time like a couple people were like oh have fun in melbourne and it was like you're responding to something that i said months ago but it's still accurate because i'm going to melbourne yeah i need to stop rambling like does that make sense i don't know i just found that really kind of like cool and weird and strange but Anyway, I do have a couple of little stories from when I was in Melbourne. Um, so we went to Melbourne again last week. We went to, actually we went for um, Easter and we went to watch the football. So my husband, actually no, my dad and my grandma always used to go to the football um, for quite some time, actually, they've always kind of gone to the football together. And then, um, when I started dating my husband, who at the time, I guess would have been my boyfriend, um, he started going with them. So my dad and my husband would stay in the city together. And then my grandma would go stay at my, um, auntie's house. So yeah, it was just kind of like their thing. And then this year they were like, oh, why don't you come? Because I've just recently gotten really into the football as well. So I was really keen to go and watch a game. So my dad and my husband stayed together in a hotel and then my grandma and me stayed at my auntie's house. And when I tell people that, they just think it's so funny because they're like, but why is you like your dad staying with with like your husband shouldn't you be and I'm like yeah but I don't know I guess we're just weird like that so yeah we all went up to Melbourne and it was pretty good actually um so my auntie lives like about a 40 minute train ride from the city so I really like catching the train I like just hopping on there I listen to like a podcast or I listen to a YouTube video or watch some Netflix and just like chill and just like sit on the train I usually have a cup of coffee with me and it's just like a really kind of nice experience except on the last night that we were in Melbourne um I wanted to stay out in the city a little bit longer and have dinner and my grandma wanted to go home to my auntie's house. So I was like, look, it's fine. I'll catch the train on my own. Like nothing can happen. It'll be totally fine. Now, first of all, nothing did actually happen, but I was pretty afraid because I was catching the train about 9.30 at night and I'd actually caught the train on my own really late at night before, except it was after a concert. So there were a lot of people and there were like police and stuff. 
So I was kind of going off that first experience and I was like, yeah, I've done it before. I've caught the train on my own and I was fine. And I didn't really think that, you know, last time it, it was fine because there were so many people. So this time, like there were still people, but not as many people. And um, on the train, there was this guy and he just, I know that you shouldn't, like people say, don't judge a book by its cover, but I kind of don't always agree with that. I think that in some situations you really do need to trust your instincts and you do need to judge people. Um, just because you judge someone doesn't mean that you have to be mean to them. It doesn't mean that you have to be cruel. But I think that when it's your own safety, that is, um, like when it's about your own safety, you should listen to your instincts. So there was this person on the train and I, it sounds really bad. He just looked like not a great person. Um, he just looked a bit scruffy. He looked like perhaps he was maybe into maybe drugs or alcohol in a bad way. Um, he just, he didn't look very good. So I was like, oh, feeling quite, um, not anxious, but I was just wary of him. And I was just, I had it in my mind that I didn't feel comfortable hopping off at the same station that he hopped off at. So I kind of had a plan that, um, at the stations at night time, they usually have like a protective officer there. So if an officer was there, I was going to hop off. But I just had a plan that if this dude was hopping off at the same station as me and there were no other people or that there wasn't an officer, I was just going to go to the next station and get picked up from there. So I had like my plan. And anyway, so we're going along and he wasn't really doing anything. He was just sort of like sitting there. And then all of a sudden these two like officers came onto the train and they approached this guy and they were like, mate, we need some ID or something. And all of a sudden he just went crazy. And he was like, who the F are you? F off. I've just gotten out of jail and I don't have time for your nonsense. And he, he like stood up and he was swaying. So I think he could have been in intoxicated because he couldn't stand up straight. And he was just like swearing his head off. And everyone in the train was like, oh my God. Like you could just see everyone like getting really nervous about it. And um, I don't know if these were like the protective officers or cops. I think that they were just like protective officers. And they were like, yeah, we just want some ID. Like, you don't need to swear at us. That's all we want. So he's like, F you, F, F, F this. And then they were just kind of like, yep, yeah, all right, whatever. Have a nice day and hopped off the train. And everyone on the train was looking at each other like, no, this guy needs to hop off the train. Like he... He was a bit frightening at this point. So once the officers had hopped off the train, he was just sitting there just yelling at no one in particular. And he was like, I hate those bloody officers. They're the scum of the earth. People treat me like that. No wonder I snap. No wonder I'm in jail. And like just swearing and going off. And everyone was like, oh my God. So a few more stations down, the train stops again and it doesn't take off straight away and everyone's like oh what's happening next minute two police officers hop on the train and they go up to the guy and they're like hey I think his name was Trent like they knew his name they're like hey Trent we've got a warrant for your arrest you need to hop off the train and then this guy again just goes ape he was just like absolutely losing his plot and then the next thing he said scared the living out of me because he was like you know I've just gotten out of jail for my gun charge. And I was like, oh my God, a gun charge. So we, I live in Australia. Guns are not legal in Australia. Um, people can still get them and obviously, but this dude had, he's like, I just got out of jail for my gun charge. And I was like, oh my God, a gun charge. What the heck? That is so frightening. Like it's not like in America where everybody has a gun, guns are normal. This is Australia. People don't really have guns. So um, they ended up like taking him off the train. And everyone on the train was kind of like looking at each other, like kind of like, oh, thank God. And yeah, so that was my creepy train experience. And I, I made it back to the station safely and everything. And um, when I got off at the station, there were two protective officers there. So it was all fine. But oh, for like a little bit there, I was like genuinely, I was afraid. And I don't think I'll ever catch the train late at night again. Um, I listened to too many true crime podcasts and it just... It's a little bit freaky. And that guy, like, I'm not going to lie, he frightened me. So I think, I guess my moral to the story is if you feel unsafe in a situation, trust your gut, honestly. Like, this dude clearly was not safe. And, yeah, like, he was just a little crazy. So 
I'm really happy that I did like listen to my gut and that I had like a plan in place if he was to hop off at my station or something. And I, it sounds bad. I guess he got taken away and arrested and I guess, I don't know, he needed to be. But yeah, I'm never catching the train late at night again and I'm really glad that I listened to my gut instinct. So that was just one of my Melbourne stories. I actually, I planned on talking a lot more, but this is a shorter voiceover than I expected. This is only like a 10 or... 11 minute video so I do have some other stories to tell but I will um, tell those two other stories um, on the next speed build but before I do go I'll just tell one more quick story I've been on this like real thing where I've been watching a lot of horror movies lately and um, I've been on night shift at work and when I'm on night shift it's pretty much it's me by myself plus a few security guards in a five-story building that fits like 2,000 people at night time all by myself. So it's scary enough as it is. And then I made the mistake of watching these stupid scary movies on night shift. And I was so afraid that I didn't want to go to the toilet. So what I did was I put a Spring Sims video on my phone and I took the video into the bathroom with me because the bathroom is like a bit of a walk away from my desk. And I just like set it up there and I was just like, Keep me safe, Spring Sims, because he's such, like, a bright, happy kind of person. So I'm just, like, listening to this random Spring Sims video while I'm, like, going to the bathroom because I'm, like, genuinely too afraid to go to the toilet on my own because I've been watching all these stupid movies and scaring myself. But on that note, if you know any really good horror movies, comment them down below because I'm, like, on this, like, real, like, horror movie thing and I want to watch as many as possible. So if you want to scare me more put some videos down below and we are nearly done guys so I'm going to leave you with some music and screenshots thank you so much for watching I hope to catch you all in another video and I hope to catch you all for the remainder of my Melbourne stories toodaloo y'all